You gotta love a fresh-faced director, or in this case directing duo, because they're so full of potential. Kubrick's first few films were weak, there is no doubt about it. But he grew in leaps and bounds and soon became a maestro. Every time a director takes a shot at goal, we get the chance to witness the birth of a giant. So I was very pleased to watch Caddo Lake, written and directed by Celine Held and Logan George, precisely because this could potentially be the start of something great. A bigger budget, celebrity star in Dylan O'Brien, and a twisty thriller concept produced by M. Night Shyamalan, plus a setting you don't see every day, could all produce a unique film. Now that didn't occur here, but, but, for the most part, they did a good job. I was happy to have watched this 100 minute flick as it kept me engaged and entertained throughout. So what the heck happens in Caddo Lake? Well, you've seen this one before. A grief-stricken and taciturn Paris, played by Dylan O'Brien, works on Caddo Lake salvaging rusted pipe from old oil pumps. One day a young girl disappears and we're drawn into a mystery on the lake which ties together Paris and Ellie, a scrappy young woman and sister of the missing girl. Things take a turn for the strange, as only an M. Night production can, when characters discover something which I can't talk about without spoiling the fun. Will our heroes find the missing girl? And what is really happening on Caddo Lake? First things first, Caddo Lake is a lot of fun. It starts slow for the first 20 odd minutes as it establishes everything, but once things escalate, the picture moves beautifully and it was very engaging and at times even moving. The script is full of details that make sure every character comes across as genuine to their region and unique as individuals. While characters do have cliched backstories and drama amongst themselves, there's no denying that the stuff written just works when it comes to making the audience feel for them. A dead parent, stepdad encroaching on family turf, strained maternal relationship, you get the picture. It's been done before, but people keep doing it because it's effective. Now that's both a strength and a weakness, so we'll chalk it up as par for the course. The editing is solid, with particular emphasis on good colour grading, and devoid of any fat that'd make you scream, get to the point! The twist, however, is somewhat obvious, thanks to Hollywood's disdain for a certain segment of white people. Yes, I'm gonna get political. If you've watched a lot of movies, in particular comic book movies, then you'll think, hey, that's an interesting casting choice. I hardly ever see that type of person on screen. And then that spoils the surprise for you because you realise, right, okay, there's a reason for it. But that's all I'll say about that. Caddo Lake is a solid outing where the team achieved a good job, but yes, we do have to acknowledge that it's nothing which will set the world on fire. Is that really a bad thing though? If Hollywood consistently produced films of the quality of Caddo Lake, an original script no less, every year then I'd be as happy as a pig in mud. Dylan O'Brien is the MVP and boy do I hope he becomes very famous because I just can't deny that I like watching him work. Having only recently seen him as Dan Aykroyd in Saturday Night, I must really see Say that I just find him captivating. He seems to exist in a strange arena where he's not quite a movie star because of a wellspring of emotion behind his eyes, and yet not quite a character actor thanks to a handsome face which demands a close-up. His performance as Paris was full of sorrow, fury and keen intelligence that hasn't been refined through higher education. Now how the heck does an actor convey that last point? I have no idea and it's why I love actors so much. They can do things which mystify. So Caddo Lake is solid, no doubt about it, but I have a few notes, don't I always? I'd stop watching here if you don't want any spoilers. Firstly, if you've seen the Netflix series Dark, or any time travel film really, then you'll be able to guess how everything is going to play out. The fact that there was a redhead in the film, as I alluded to earlier, made it very, very obvious to me that we were dealing with a time travel story right up front. Now, maybe that's just because I've seen a lot of movies, but the point still holds. This isn't particularly a bad thing, but it does fall into a criticism on my end because you already know the tropes of the genre, so why not push yourself to avoid them? At the end of the day, if you're paid to make a movie, then surely the responsibility to be original should be higher. Minor quibble, but it's worth mentioning. Secondly, just about every scene is a stand and deliver, or squat and deliver, or sit and deliver, where characters go back and forth, and we're left watching talking heads. It would have been nice if directors Logan George and Celine Held had considered some blocking, especially during the first act talkathon, which is needed to set up the fun for the rest of the film. All up, you could do a lot worse with your free time this weekend than watch Caddo Lake, and I look forward to seeing what comes next from George and Held. Hopefully, hopefully, 
They continue to focus on making original stories, even if derivative, because it'd be a lot better to see them shine in this regard than join the Marvel DC bullshit. Thanks for watching. Something's happening in that part of the lake. Wolves don't live around here. It's not that they'd be that far out in the water. What if the seizures are hereditary? I never had one. Till now. This is my sister's. Tell me where you got this.